Hey, FOMO Sapiens. This week on Thursday, we're going to be having an interview with Professor Zainab Tan at MIT, Sloan School of Management, talking about her new book about how to create good jobs. But in anticipation of that, I was thinking about what we talk about in the interview and thinking about the fact that Zainab was my professor when I was a first year student at Harvard Business School. And then I remembered that we have had somebody on the show who talks about this issue and also was a student of Zainab's one year behind me. Her name is Kate Everly Walker, and she wrote a book called The Good Boss, all about how folks can be better bosses to women as they rise up the ranks. We talked about the book when it came out, and it just made me think that I wanted to dig into the archives and pull that out in advance of the conversation with Zainab because it very much tees up that combo. And more importantly, since she and I were both students of Zainab, it just felt right. So check out this conversation and I will see you on Thursday with Zainab. Until then, take care of yourselves, FOMO sapiens. FOMO. My name's Patrick McGinnis and I'll admit it, I have FOMO. And since you're here, I'm gonna bet that you do too. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing. If you learn to channel your FOMO productively, you can make the most of every opportunity while keeping your sanity in the process. This is FOMO Sapiens After Hours, the snackable show about how you can make FOMO a force for good. FOMO. FOMO. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of After Hours. I have a very special guest with me this week, and I don't always have guests, but I read her new book, which is called The Good Boss. Nine Ways Every Manager Can Support Women at Work. And I said, you got to come on After Hours. And my guest today is Kate Everly Walker. Now, Kate Everly Walker went to undergrad with me, been a friend of mine for a long time. She has seen me dressed on Halloween like Alex P. Keaton. And so she's laughing. I can see you laughing. And so um, we're not going to talk about that today, but we're going to talk about the new book because when Kate told me she was writing a book, I thought this is going to be a good one. So we're going to talk about the book, and I just want to bring you in, Kate. Kate, welcome to After Hours. Thank you, Patrick. Nice to be here. I did want to ask, I just did my third appearance on another podcast, and they sent me a refrigerator magnet. So I was wondering what I what I get for doing my third <laughs> Homo sapiens appearance. Third Homo sapiens appearance, you get, I'm not going to tell people any of your Halloween stories. How's that? <laughs> that is, that's a really good deal for me. I'll take it. Okay. There we go. Well, it's great to have you here. So tell us just to get started. Why did you write this book? I wrote this book because I felt like there was something wrong with the approach to mentoring and developing women. So once I became a CEO, I started getting flooded with asks for advice. Some of it was from young women saying, how did you, how did you make it to the C-suite? What should I do? How, how can I progress in my career? But I also got a lot of requests from, from guys that I knew, you know, CEOs, leaders of companies saying, oh, I'd love for you to come and speak to the women in my company. I feel like I need to do more to support them. And, you know, I'd say, well, yeah, I I would love to come speak to the women in your company, but like you should speak to them too. Uh, You can do this too, and you can support women. And, you know, the more I thought about it, I just felt like there, there's this whole thing of, we look to women to support women and women to pay it forward. And that was totally how it happened for me. I went to work for a female CEO and then she supported me in becoming her successor. And then for my next CEO job, I got to know a female board member who advocated to bring me in. And that and that's great. And we all, you know, women definitely want to help other women, but there just like aren't enough of us in CEO and board roles to really make an impact to the level that I think we all want to for women. So I decided, well, I want to write an advice book that is for everyone, maybe, maybe men most of all, because two thirds of all managers are men to show them, you know, it's, there's really a lot of ways, a lot of simple, authentic ways that all of you can be better supporters and managers of women too. So that's the book that I wrote. You know, it's interesting. I just had a conversation before this with our mutual friend, Jason, about the fact that if you look, go to the websites of like leading private equity firms and VC firms, and it's like, there aren't many women there. And, right. and so like, if, if men don't read a book like this and learn how they can be supportive, you know, you can't simply just say like, this isn't, oh, I don't know what to do. Like I'll, you know, the women should support each other and I'm not going to figure it out. Of course, you need to figure it out. Everybody who's listening, all you men out there, 
we can do it. So, uh, so we read the book. We will read the book. But tell us, just get started. Like, what? I mean, what does a good boss look like, and what does a bad boss look like? So, I think it starts with, you know, from the perspective of an employee, you should you should like your boss. You should enjoy spending time with him or her. You know, I I had those bosses where like you'd see them walking down the hallway in the office and like kind of secretly hope they weren't coming to your desk and maybe breathe a sigh of relief when they walked into somebody else's office. Like that is not the feeling you want. So you you don't have the right boss if you're a little uncomfortable, a little nervous, a little bit not yourself when you're talking to them or if you just don't have fun talking to your boss. So I think, you know, it's all about human connections and you're spending a lot of time at work. You want to be your, your full self so to speak. So if you don't feel like you're being yourself, if you don't feel like you really like spending time with your boss, I think you've, you've got, you've, something's wrong there. Um, and I think then, you know, the next thing that I look at is, do you have somebody who is doing stuff for you proactively or, you know, making future promises that, that aren't necessarily to come to be, for example, uh, you know, my good bosses, just gave me raises. I didn't have to like work up a big pitch for why I deserved one or what I wanted. They, you know, they'd surprise me and be like, you know, you've been doing a really great job and I want to recognize it. And, and here it is, whether it raise promotion, those types of things. And then, you know, the bad bosses are the ones where you do have to put all of that work and time and effort into asking for something uh, only to often get told, I'll think about it, I'll look into it. And then maybe they don't come back to you at all. You have to ask again, or maybe they say, you know, I can't, I can't pull that off for you right now, but give me six months and we'll make it happen. Like th those to me are bad boss signs that you don't really have an advocate. FOMO. FOMO. Yeah. Indecision, mm -hmm. not being transparent, having FOBO, not good. Now this is like, I guess I'm going to bring up Jason again, because Jason told me when he was reading the book, there was one thing he really liked and struck with him. That was like a great handy thing which is about calling people by their names, mm -hmm. which can seem, it's like one of the, well, why don't you tell, why don't you tell what you wrote? Because I think this is one of those things that like, it's so easy to do, but we forget. So talk about that. Yeah. So it's, it's ca calling someone by their name. It starts with the, the really basic that you would think you don't have to talk about. Of course, everyone should get names right, but it is amazing how often people don't. They, they call somebody, you know, Jenny instead of Jen, or if they're writing in an email, maybe they, you know, spell the name wrong. I give the example of a woman, a woman in my office whose name is Crystal, starting with a K. People always write it with a C. And, you know, the, the problem with that is it shows that whoever's doing that, whoever got your name wrong, didn't really listen to you, didn't really pay attention, doesn't respect you enough to make sure they get it right. Because, you know, when, when people respect someone, they make sure they get the name right, right? Like no, nobody's getting the president's name wrong. Um, <laughs> so, true. you know, I think it, it starts with that, that really basic, get, get the name right, say it right, spell it right. But then it goes into terms of endearment. It is shocking to me still how often men will address women in work context as honey, sweetie, uh, young, young lady. I tell a story in the book of the time that I'm still really mad about when someone called me young lady in a meeting when I was already a CEO. This was not, I was not a young lady. I was in my forties when this happened. Wow. Um, and so, you know, so that's something that th there's, there's a stat I share in the book that in a survey of managers, 41% of managers said they thought it was okay to use terms of endearment and work, but 75% of women surveyed said it is not okay. So there's, um, you know, the, there, I, I like to use what I call the Janet Jackson rule, which, uh, comes from the, you know, the Epic song, nasty. Know my first name, ain't baby. It's Janet, Miss Jackson. If you're nasty, <laughs> that like covers everything that you need to know. Like, yeah, you know, her name's Janet. It's not baby. Don't call her baby. And if you really want to convey respect, use the last name because last names are a big thing too. Men are actually more than fifty percent as likely to be called by last name only in the workplace, and that can be, you know, a collegial thing that can be a respectful thing comes through and you know students are more likely to refer to male professors by last name only uh 
political pundits are actually over 100% more likely to refer to male politicians by last name and female politicians by first name. Uh, so there's, you know, there, there's all of this data out there that people use that that last name only, you know, like, hey, McGinnis, uh, much more often with men than they do with women. And there's like a loss of, of respect there. So, um, so yeah, so my one, my one exception to the get her name right, use her whole name, use her full name is if you want to go with the last name nickname, that that is actually a great gender equalizer. I like that. Words matter. And, you know, I'll just tell you one thing. You can call me whatever you want. Just don't call me late for dinner. Just kidding. That is that, that's <laughs> terrible. Sorry, everybody. Sorry for that. All right. So, Kate, one last question for you. Say you were stuck in a bad boss situation. You're dealing with somebody who is difficult. How do you change that dynamic? So I actually suggest going around them. Um, ask someone else in the organization, doesn't have to be their boss, doesn't have to be that that literal or that bold uh, of a going around, but ask someone else in your company who you think cares about you, who's rooting for you, who sees your value for their advice. First and foremost, I'd start with advice on what you could do to you know get more opportunities, to be considered for more projects, for a promotion, you know, whatever the thing is. And then, you know, based on that advice, if it feels right, ask them if they could help you, if they could advocate for you and, you know, ultimately get, get yourself out of the bad boss situation. And, you know, I think sometimes people, people get a little tripped up if they make it too personal and make it about like, I don't want to work for this person. I say, you know, a lot of people will be willing to help you and support you if you keep it focused on the productive side of, you know, what I want is to work hard. What I want is more opportunities to do that. How can you help me get the opportunities as opposed to how can you help me get away from that other person? That is what we call on this show, entrepreneurial decision-making. I love it. All right. The book is The Good Boss. You can find Kate at her website, which is kateeverlywalker.com. And Everly is spelled E-P-E-R-L-E. And she is on Instagram at CEO Author Mom. Kate Everly Walker, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis.